Well, very good. We're here to talk about uh, green and uh, digital shipping corridors uh, with uh, two experts in the domain. So, uh, Ricardo Sanchez, uh, maybe you could present you. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Ricardo Sanchez. Uh, I currently am professor of uh, maritime economics at the Universidad de los Andes in Bogota, Colombia, and Cartagena, Colombia, and the head of the Caribbean Research Institute based on Kingston, Jamaica. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, Jasmine Bascom, uh, please introduce you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm um, Jasmine Bascom from the Global Maritime Forum, uh, which is a, a not-for-profit organization focused on uh, decarbonizing the maritime sector and ensuring that um, the uh, human sustainability of those working in the sector are improving. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm uh, Guillaume Gaillard from the Maritime Research Institute uh, Netherlands, and I will be uh, sharing this, uh, this session on, uh, on green corridor and, well, green and digital uh, shipping uh, corridors. So let's start with the first uh, setting. Yeah? Uh, some, some corridors are already uh, existing, but uh, on paper. It's maybe good to, uh, to remind and to, to say which co main corridors are existing at this moment or has been set up on paper, and then we will discuss the, about their implementation afterwards. Happy to uh, yes. kick off. Um, so maybe we can't list every single corridor because um, one of the things that is going to be published within the next month or so is um, the Global Maritime Forum's new annual progress report on green shipping corridors, which um, is going to, uh, I guess, reveal that uh, there are now 80 uh, green and digital shipping corridors in existence globally. Um, so I don't think we have time maybe to go through no, all 80. No. But they're mainly um, based in the north, eh? Uh, yes, there are lots and yeah. lots based in the north uh, with the kind of, um, with different global north countries. So for example, some of the ones that we work on uh, at the Global Maritime Forum include <coughs> the Australia East Asia Shipping Corridor, which is an iron ore corridor, uh, the South Africa EU Corridor, uh, there's the Singapore Rotterdam Corridor, um, I'm forgetting some. Texas Rotterdam is another. Yeah. Yeah. So it's mainly connecting large hubs, large uh, harbors, uh, which are well, Europe or Asia based. So the, really the main. The With main, the exception uh, the of South Africa. Yes. Okay. Okay. Are there in S South America maybe some of them that might appear or? Uh, yes, um, we, we, some, we have some <coughs> projects, but especially coming yeah. to electrification or using other kind of fuels. Yeah. But. Um, mm -hmm in Latin America and in other places. Um, the potential of green corridors uh, lies not only in the carbonizing roads, yeah, but also in uh, overcoming decades of uh, institutional and uh, logistical fragmentation or passenger transport yeah, fragmentation. Then, uh, despite the persistent infrastructure gap, the several initiatives show promise. Yeah? For instance, the Paraguay Paraná Waterway is a north-south waterway. It's um, progressing to a model that integrates fleet renewal yeah, use, using um, more efficient fuels, biofuels, for instance, not electrical now. But um, and uh, in, in other cases, the gradual electrification, for instance, in the link between Buenos Aires to Montevideo, Uruguay, is uh, for passengers. Yeah. Okay. Is, uh, is coming for electrical ships. Yeah. Yeah? What is the for you the, the main challenge to make those corridors operational? Is it the, the ships? Is it the energy, the infrastructure, the mix of all of them? Because I mean, now there's a, let's say a plan to create those corridors based on special well, specifications. What should it mean to reduce emission? But where do you see the, the let's say the, the most important development that is required at this moment? I think, um, there needs to be more action taken to ensure that uh, the e-fuel market is ready. Um, and, you know, there's a real opportunity for countries in the global south to uh, stand at the forefront of that challenge. Um, a lot of these countries are, you know, rich in, in renewable energies, maybe untapped uh, potential. Um, and so... There's, yeah, there's a question about where you where you think about bunkering, right? Do, yeah. Are you doing it where there is where is uh, the most potential for hydrogen production? Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I think one of the key issues around uh, 
zero emission fuels and ensuring that they are scalable in time mm -hmm. for the transition uh, to reach you know our net zero goals by mid-century. Uh, that we have an issue in the fact that there is a cost gap. We have a we have a green premium on these e-fuels, um, <clears throat> and so we need to uh, encourage national governments to. Uh, bridge that cost gap where they can with the right uh, regulatory environment, the right policy measures, um, and, and obviously also at the international level under the IMO, pushing for a, the adoption of the net zero framework to provide that kind of market certainty to enable those e-fuels to scale. Okay. But this, well, you, you mentioned here a, a nice paradigm is that the, let's say, the initiative of Green Corridor is based on, on actual bigger shipping lanes. It's coming from North countries and larger hubs, um, and then going to south, then this is where the energy mm -hmm. could be, should be, will be in terms of renewables. So that means that the opening of the Green Corridor will also shift probably the uh, energy supply to the ports from the south because it can provide the renewable energy. Is it the picture that you are drawing now? Because that gives a very big chance for countries with a lot of uh, solar energy possible or wind, and they could become through this corridor the the one providing the uh, the energy supply for those corridors, is it is it a picture that you you have in mind for the Absolutely. future? Uh, in, in in Latin America, the the main focus right right now is to ships, yeah, transit, mm -hmm. no no for ports, yeah, okay. no no we have no enough energy electricity, yeah, by um, by now. Then the main objectives is. Uh, modern fleet yeah, using <coughs> biofuel or in, in some cases uh, electrical ships. Uh, but in, in, in other cases, uh, some in Chile, for instance, uh, the region is beginning to explore green hydrogen as a clean, clean fuel mm. um, alternative. Uh, leveraging its uh, abundant renewable energy that it is uh, very common in South America. Yeah. Then uh, it is, um, for instance, uh, pilot projects in electrical river mobility. Yeah, we have a project in Colombia for uh, the transport of a uh, child to the school. Yeah, using electrical boats. Yeah, in the, in the Putumayo, in the in the Amazonas River. Yeah, but it uh, it, is, it, it is working as. Uh, uh, projects uh, at the beginning, yeah? yeah. But we have a big scenario yeah. in front of us. Yeah, because there's a lot growing. of potential renewable energy being produced by uh, southern uh, yeah, countries. Solar. Yeah, solar. solar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's, it's, it's the forest, yeah. the, the Amazonian forest. Then uh, sun is magical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then we have uh, several boats for, for for the child yeah. going to the school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then so this is starting small scale and then being able to yes. improve and increase. Yes. Scale. Yeah. 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 Do you have in your organization also plans uh, made analysis, for example, of the, let's say the, the potential of southern countries to be a game changer, in fact, in energy supply, or because if if we have the connection between these large hubs, which mm. are usually the hubs where at this moment fossil energy is provided. Mm then opening these corridors to 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 more, uh, let's say, to th third countries or to other countries could create in these countries also a hub for to provide the renewable energy. Yeah. Are these things that you have been investigating maybe or? Uh, <laughs> maybe less so on the, uh, yeah. the supply side of the renewable energy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that w there is a challenge within the shipping sector in connecting the, the shipping companies <coughs> with um, with the supply of the, these e-fuels yeah. um, and, and actually positioning maritime as a key off-taker for hydrogen derivatives. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, you know, that just means that we need to do better um, in presenting ourselves as, as ready mm -hmm. and creating that aggregated demand signal to show that, um, yeah, that off-take yeah. will come. Yeah. But it's a chicken and egg problem. Exactly. Because yeah. the, I mean, Maersk put few ships ready on e-methanol and there was not enough supply. So they went back, unfortunately, to, uh, well, unfortunately, depends which point of view, but for air quality better with LNG, but for global warming less. Mm. Um, and, and what we hear from the energy sector is that if they are providing the fuel, then uh, there's no client that they won't be able to, uh, to sell their uh, new energy. So um, 
the implementation seems to me the most difficult part in the whole story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and to that timely between uh, between uh, different stakeholders. But I mean, the amount of renewable energy companies I've I've met here on the ground in Mumbai is yeah. is um, pretty promising. Okay. Um, so I do think there's progress. Okay. So India, well, we are in India now, so good yeah. to speak about uh, about this country. Um, I mean, you mentioned the potential of, of, of uh, let's say, renewable energy in whatever format, so hydrogen or hydrogen derivatives with uh, mm -hmm. other e-fuels. Um, then India could become a hub for bunkering this energy, uh, despite the fact that the containers may stay in Singapore or Rotterdam. And then <coughs> India could play maybe on the, because it's on, 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 on the main routes, could also play a role there in, let's say, energy supply uh, on, on those corridors. Definitely. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, there, there are, what, 12 major ports in India, and I think three of them have been identified by the government um, of India in their uh, Maritime 47 Vision, I think it's called, um, which is a really comprehensive strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, three of those ports... Um, one in Gujarat, um, Tutukorin, I'm going to forget the other one. Um, I think it's in Tamil Nadu. But anyway, those three ports dotted around the coast of yeah. India, um, they've been specifically identified to be established as green hydrogen hubs by okay. the Indian government. Okay. Um, so that, that work is in development, but I do think on the back end, the infrastructure build out on the supply side of the, of the renewables is, is you know, more okay. attention is needed. Okay. Do you see the same thing from uh, this we, South America perspective? Uh, from the you, Caribbean you, perspective, yeah. You, you mean Chile, yeah, as a potential provider also for hydrogen, so oh, maybe yes, on the Pacific yes, route? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, this, uh, this experience is coming in Chile, in, in southern Chile, uh, <clears throat> because the renewable energy, yeah, then is able to produce green hydrogen, yeah. yeah? It is uh, in the first steps but <coughs> it is coming yeah thinking of the future of hydrogen demanding for shipping or simply to export yeah. to other countries yeah. yeah but but well following on that idea of of getting certain destination as a green energy supplier and then having other portfolio for logistics for goods yeah some of them could combine um, if we achieve that, that will be certainly a game changer for the to reduce the emission globally from shipping. But that means also that will also drastically reduce the uh, fleet uh, transporting at this moment oil and gas because mm. now where the energy is produced is is uh, is uh, brought to those hubs uh, by ships. But now well, the vision which is mm -hmm. given is to say, well, don't transport the energy, but bunker where it's available because you want to keep the emission level low. So. That will probably change a lot the uh, logistics of uh, of uh, energy supply and and part of the shipping as well. Yeah, yeah. This is this perspective of the big companies, yeah, mm -hmm. for <coughs> big transport demands. Yeah. But if you think about the small islands yeah, in the Caribbean, mm. uh, then this is a very different kind of problem, yeah, because you no, don't need big ships. Yeah, you don't need uh, special fuel for these ships. Electrical engines are the best option. Yeah, yeah? Sure. for instance, if you if you think about the Windward Islands, yeah, the, the Eastern Belt Islands in the Caribbean, yeah, yeah, yeah. there there is a very interesting project of uh, ferries for transporting people, passengers, yeah. or trailers with cargo, yeah. yeah? Then uh, this kind of uh, ferries are 100% uh, yeah. uh, electrical. Yeah. But in that case, the electricity should also be locally produced to, <laughs> to avoid transport. So it's like, like, but I mean, this kind of ecosystem that you yeah. draw at local scale between islands, yeah. in fact, are the same principle at larger scale. I mean, you need to produce local energy in a renewable way and then provide it to the users and then get the transport running. Yes. and. If you think about the small islands, yeah, the the ports are very small. Yeah, yeah? Mm. one, two, in the maximum three sides. Mm. Yeah, each port. <coughs> then you need special ships adapted yeah. to this kind of port. Then ferries are a very good solution, electrical ferries. Okay.
Okay, thank you. J just maybe a closing remark because we're reaching the end of the... What, what do you think <coughs> will be the time for the implementation of those green corridors? Because they are now, I mean, on paper, and now we want to mm. get them uh, active. Do you have any wish, maybe, or ideas of something realistic, but maybe something like dream? When could this happen in, in practice? It's tricky to answer. Yeah. We talk about decades. I don't have a or? crystal ball, but um, yeah, the fact that none are at implementation stage um, maybe signals to the to the idea of avoiding the announcement of many, many new corridors and instead reinforcing the efforts of those that exist already to try and ensure that they can reach implementation stage yeah. within, you know, I don't know, if we need national governments to act within the next five years to ensure there's an e-fuel market in the 2040s, yeah. then maybe within a similar time frame we can have some of the corridors reach implementation yeah. stage. And you and you mentioned government involvement, huh? because shipping ship owners can't take care of the investment, they are buying ships, they are ordering things, but uh, the infrastructure requires also of course. national support. And it's not, just, uh, it's not just national governments, we need uh, the international financial institutions, uh, multilateral development banks, all of these um, organizations are, are crucial, particularly for um, emerging markets and developing economies to, to also benefit from the transition. Okay, thank you. And for your side? A bit oh, of, uh, from a, yes, I think uh, there is a big opportunity, not only for the carbonization of shipping, mm -hmm. uh, shipping in both, yeah, for passengers and for cargo. Yeah? Yeah. But the second part is uh, digitalization, yeah? mm -hmm. because uh, at least in the, in the Caribbean area, we are very behind the state of the art. Then one champ yeah. is very good for decarbonization plus digitalization. It's a very interesting and big challenge. Yeah. Okay. And a last question maybe about, because now we talked about the energy to get ships, uh, let's say, uh, selling. Uh, there's also the, the aspect of energy supply when they're at key with the OPS system. Oh. Uh, is I mean, it's also energy supply, but in, in large quantity as well. Um, is it for you also part of the global plan to be able to drastically decarbonize the sector? Should be, should be, obviously should be. But uh, it, it is very different uh, situation in, in small islands and in small countries yeah. with not enough energy and depending on fuels, mm. carbon fuels. Then it is a very difficult balance between green goals with the reality right now, then this is a big challenge for small countries. Okay. I think, I think all of these, um, all of these elements have, will, will play a role inevitably in, in shipping's transition, mm -hmm. uh, OPS, um, bioenergy, mm -hmm. you know, but there are uh, certain uh, technologies that really need a, a little bit of an extra nudge along mm -hmm. to ensure that they actually will, um, you know, reach economies of scale um, in the way that they need to to support the, the um, full sector-wide decarbonization. So I think the, the priority um, should really be on, on those zero emission fuels, e-fuels like ammonia and methanol. Okay. All right. Well, I thank you very okay. much. I, I hear that there's a, let's say, a, a good prospect for a thousand countries, uh, India in particular, or Chile, or uh, countries who can provide a lot of renewable resources to be able to become the, let's say, the provider of the energy system mm. um, and for bunkering of ships. And, and that will certainly, well, help the green corridors to take off, uh, but also probably also change part of the shipping industry because the, the let's say, the, 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 the current status of having a lot of fossil energy shipped in harbors and an ecosystem which is efficient from energy point of view, not from emission point of view, <laughs> but it's efficient, it's working in place. Uh, but changing this whole uh, uh, chain will also influence largely the, uh, the shipping, but for the benefit of reducing emissions. So I thank you very much for your thank contribution. You so much. Thank you. Thank you.